Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Board. Mitchell Renz here in the topics of discussion. Aaron Rodgers, are the Raiders going to trade for him? Uh, doesn't really seem like it. Then at the end of today's show, we'll talk about Anthony Richardson. We'll talk about some of the other quarterbacks and then more draft news that has come out. But right now, the top trending story that people continue to send to me is around Rodgers because according to Vic Tafer, the Raiders are not going to trade for him. He said on March 1st, Ziegler and McDaniels have apparently agreed that they won't be in on the Aaron Rodgers sweepstakes. If he does decide he does not want to return to Green Bay, the Raiders just have too many holes on their roster to trade high picks for the 39-year-old quarterback. This is what I'm going to say. I'm not saying that Vic is wrong by saying this, but can people please stop being like, the Raiders will not trade for Aaron Rodgers because of this tweet. I mean, no disrespect to Vic. Vic's actually probably one of the better ones in terms of beat reporters. But we have to be able to realize that Vic's been very wrong before. I mean, look at this tweet all the way back, August 11th, 2018. Going to say it again. Raiders are not trading Khalil Mack. They traded Khalil Mack. Vic Tafer last year. Josh McDaniels is not the favorite for the Raiders' job anymore and the latest on the GM search, right? So he was wrong on the head coach. He was wrong on the general manager. And then he was also wrong. I couldn't find the tweet. If somebody wants to, you know, send it to me, great. Tafer also said that the Raiders are not going to trade for Devontae Adams. So just because Tafer said that it's not going to happen, that's not credible enough to me. This is what I'm going to say. I know how difficult it is to be somebody in this business, but until a Raiders beat writer, any of them, breaks a story, we can't look at what they put out there and be like, that's what's going to happen. That's what's not going to happen. So until a credible source says that the Raiders are not going to trade for Aaron Rodgers, in my opinion, anything is possible. Because I think at the end of the day, the beat reporters are doing the exact same thing that a lot of the YouTubers do, that a lot of people that write articles, they do their best educated guess. And that's all Tafer's doing right now, is doing his best educated guess. And I just showed you four examples that prove that's not always a, a great guess. So if you want more news and rumors here around the silver and black, make sure you're subscribed. Turn on those notifications because I do think the reason why I make this show is I'm a Raider fan, but I want to keep you guys in the loop. So if you want to join the family, hit that sub button, turn on those noties. Free agency is right around the corner, and it's going to be a hell of a time. Let's get to 134 subs. So the Raiders not trading for Aaron Rodgers, okay? I get what's been said. But I also understand the fact that Rodgers said that he's going to make a decision soon. So I do feel like sooner rather than later, we are going to know what direction that the Raiders are going to go in. I will also admit that when you look at the latest odds out there, the Raiders are still the favorites to land Aaron Rodgers. But Tom Downey, the chat sports team, they're at the NFL Combine. They've been doing a lot of talking. They've been interacting with a lot of people, and I'll be real with you. From what they tell me, it does not sound like Aaron Rodgers is even on their radar. You look at the fact that this team has been meeting with a lot of the young rookies. It seems like that's the direction they are going to go in. But until it's finalized, anything is possible to me. So I want to know from everyone watching right now, how many just win babies for the Raiders trading for Aaron Rodgers? Zero, tuck rule tuck, that means you do not think it's going to happen. One, two, three, four. Think of it as 25, 50%, 75% chance. Four just win babies, 100% chance that it's going to happen. The more and more information that I continue to get, I am not going to say it's zero just win babies. I am, though, only going to give it one just win baby. And why? Because when you see reports out there, and they are meeting with a lot of quarterbacks. They have met with Anthony Richardson, who we will talk about here in a little bit. They have met with C.J. Stroud. They have met with Bryce Young. They have met with Will Levis. They have met with Hendon Hooker. That tells me essentially where this team wants to try to go in the future. But what I do not want, and I'm already sick of it, is people sending me, and I'm seeing people out there like, Raiders aren't trading for Aaron Rodgers because of the Vic Tafer report. It's not because of the Vic Tafer report. So let's already throw that one out the window. I just showed you four examples of you can't always take what beat reporters say as gospel. Because until they break a story, I don't think it's the right thing to do. Coming up next here on the show, we're going to look at some draft news because we are going to talk about a quarterback that continues to get a lot, and I mean a lot of concentration around him for the right reasons. 
He's really special. Will he be special? That still remains to be seen. But I wouldn't be able to do today's show if it wasn't for our awesome sponsor, Cultivate. If you haven't already, head on over to wecultivate.us slash chatsports and check them out. So we got a free browser extension. That brings transparency to your Amazon shopping experience. Cultivate shows you the brand, seller, or product origin and identifies local alternatives that support local community efforts while saving you money. With over 50% of Amazon U.S. sellers based in China, Cultivate offers a way to avoid trickery from these sellers and keep money in the U.S. economy. Cultivate offers alternatives that are on average 30% less expensive than Amazon with any without any additional costs such as Amazon Prime. It can even identify local alternatives that you can pick up the same day. Cultivate users earn free donations as rewards using the extension, and the more you use it, the more you earn in donations by increasing your level. In fact, Cultivate donates 51% of the revenue they make on your purchase. So, Nation, what the heck are you waiting for? Go to wecultivate.us slash chatsports and download Cultivate for free. Let Cultivate bring transparency, savings, and community support to your Amazon shopping journey. Show the Raiders Sports some love and download it right now. It's going to be in the comments and in the description of today's show, wecultivate.us slash chat sports. So as promised, more draft news to be able to cover here. And the biggest one to me, is around the Raiders meeting with Anthony Richardson at the Combine. I knew that it was going to end up happening. It would be shameful if the Raiders did not meet with this man, and they should meet with all the quarterbacks, which has been reported that, yes, now they have been able to sit down and meet with every single one of these QBs. But I do think if you were to ask me, okay, which guy is the most likely to fall to number seven, it's a race between Richardson and Will Levis. I'm not sure exactly which one you want, but hey, both of them need to be on your board. In terms of, all right, Mitch, talk to me a little bit here about Richardson. Why is he such an interesting prospect? He's an athletic freak. To me, he's got good vision. The mechanics are just downright bad. If it was up to me, perfect situation for Richardson, you have him learn behind a veteran for at least one year. I don't know if that's going to be the Raiders' plan if they do end up landing on him, though there are some teams out there that believe that he could be the second quarterback taken. And then there's even a new report out there right now from Vincent Bonsignor saying that the Raiders could potentially trade up to make sure that they get their guy. My question to you is this. Do you want the Raiders to draft Richardson? Type D for draft or you're saying pass. Like, if you trade up, I don't know if Richardson's the guy I would trade up for. If he's there at number seven, though, and you want to go boom or bust, he's a really interesting prospect. There's no doubt about it. Now, what does NFL.com had to say around Richardson? He's a dual-threat quarterback with an elite physical profile and a lot of work that needs to be done to reach a potentially high ceiling. Richardson's frame, arm down, and mobility will demand respect as a potential first-round option. He has the ability to make plays on the move that very few of his NFL peers will be able to make. However, but his accuracy on short and simple throws left much to be desired due to, in part, to shoddy footwork and inconsistent rhythm. The footwork issues can be corrected, but the challenge will be determining whether he can be at least a functionally accurate passer at the next level. Richardson's potential to strike with the deep ball, attack the secondary from sideline to sideline, and gash teams with his legs creates greater leeway in his projection as a developmental prospect. When I look at Richardson from his ability to run the football, I do, and I've said this before to all y'all, it does. It reminds me of Cam Newton. From a passing standpoint, though, it's really hard to find a prospect because from a thrower, if, if you were to take away all his athletic ability and just a thrower, he doesn't even get drafted. Like, that's how bad of a thrower I think he is. Eh, that's actually maybe inaccurate. He's got a huge arm. He's definitely not going, though, early on. He's probably a day three guy if you're looking at just the arm, but he has the athletic ability, and that's one of his strengths. High upside, and if you believe that a coach, general manager, can get the most out of him, then it's worth the risk. That elite size, that speed, that athletic ability, the outstanding arm strength. I mean, I would say right now he probably has the second best arm, maybe third best arm in the draft behind Will Levis, behind C.J. Stroud. It's legit. The weakness is, though, he needs to be able to improve his pre-snap recognition. It's not there. And he's only 21 years old, and that's usually what happens when you've played in only 13 games like he has of the SEC. His mechanics are bad, and they are very inconsistent. 
If you can get the mechanics to work, something very similar to what you saw a player like Josh Allen, who had very bad mechanics coming out of Wyoming, now his mechanics are good. And guess what? He's a hell of a quarterback. Richardson's accuracy needs a lot of improvement. When I look at a quarterback, what I want, I like accurate. Accurate to me sometimes is more important than the big arm. Yeah, the big arm can do certain things that other things can't, but if Richardson can put it together and you're patient with him and you get a good coach, you put him in the right system, he does have all the things that you're looking for to truly be a legit NFL quarterback. And I'm not just saying, like, top 10. He's got top five upside. That's how good he potentially can be. It's just finding the right person, finding the right system to make sure that he does ultimately hit that high ceiling. Now, yesterday on today's or yesterday on the Raiders report, I said I would do a tracker, a meeting tracker, try to keep you guys up to date on some new stuff. I know that the Raiders met with Brian Branch, safety from Alabama, and depending on when you watch this video, I'm going to be dropping a YouTube short from the interview that our guys got. If you want more news, you want more rumors around the Raiders and at the Combine, hit that subscribe button because the team is out there. We're going to be posting a lot, and I mean a lot more player interviews.